Hello, you beautiful souls, and welcome back to Catching Waves Yoga with me, Leslie. Obviously, we haven't been doing a little bit of yoga as of recent videos, but we'll come back to that. I think it's more important to talk about some of those bigger topics when it comes to TOS, like constantly needing to advocate for yourself. That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, because you go into a doctor's office and you have all this physical pain, you have emotional pain, you have so much going on, especially if you're at the beginning of trying to figure out what is actually going on. And then a doctor tells you straight into your face, it's all in your head. There's nothing wrong with you. You're, you're just anxious. <laughs> I have been there and it is one of the most defeating things that can happen to you because you know that there is some physical pain and obviously you're emotional and you're anxious, which then makes it all worse, right? So it is hand in hand tied together, but you're not making it up most of the time. You're not making it up, right? And uh, I think the hardest part with it is you're gonna go through multiple doctors and it can take years to have thoracic outlet syndrome even diagnosed. For me personally, it took a year and a half of jumping through the hoops that insurance makes you go through, of seeing doctor after doctor and having scan after scan in areas that weren't even related to what was actually going on. So I can 100% understand when you start to get depressed, anxious, overwhelmed, have panic attacks, I've been there because you know something is going on and you just want answers. And this is why it is very important to self-advocate if you get that gut feeling of this doctor isn't taking me seriously, or they're not even looking into it, they're just jumping through the hoops of, you know, whatever insurance makes them do, that's your sign to walk away. Find a different practitioner. Find someone that is going to help you with your needs to get you the resources you need and to really start to heal and to get that official diagnosis so you can move forward with whatever, whatever avenue you end up choosing, whether it's actually having surgery or whether it's needing to find a really good sports physical therapist. There are so many different things that you can do without just sitting there and taking a doctor saying it's all in your head, right? Um, I was very fortunate that my, doc my primary doctor was like, I hear you. I believe you. This is a very rare thing. I don't know a lot about it, but you clearly have done your research. I'm going to support you. And at that point, she had connected me with, you know, we did all of the scans like rotator cuff and carpal tunnel stuff, like all the things that were all negative. Uh, we did the electrical shock thing. That sounds really traumatic, but kind of um, where they like go in and test your nerves. And again, everything was negative and it was like leaving me empty handed. Um, so we ended up, um, she did connect me with a neuromuscular skeletal doctor. I believe he's also called an osteopathic doctor, um, does a lot of manual manipulations with some very specific um, muscle techniques that I can't even explain because I didn't go to school for it. Um, but, you know, at least that was a start. I had someone in my corner saying, I don't think you need surgery. I think we can work through this. Here is a lot of exercises and homework. And so between what my uh, neuromuscular skeletal doctor had given me and all the random protocols that I had created through yoga and through stretching and through the melt method and all the trials and errors, you know, obviously here I am now in a place where I'm really healthy and I'm really well and I'm pain free and I'm able to lift weights without pain or flare ups or anything. Um, so back to going to that doctor and went to him for a very long time. And then again, was going through the hoops of what insurance was requiring us to do. And then my doctor finally said, hey, we've marked, we've checked all the boxes. I can finally send you to a vascular surgeon. And he was the one that it did officially diagnose me with thoracic outlet syndrome on my right side. Um, it did turn bilateral at some point, but it's not any longer. I don't have any issues unless I do something like very posturally wrong. And then, you know, anyone could have a flare up even if they don't have a flare. Um, but that surgeon, he had diagnosed me and then he just looked at me and said, hey, you're not the worst person I've seen. If things get worse, come back. I'll take out your rib and your neck muscles. That like nonchalant, like no big deal. <laughs> yes, it's a big deal that can create a lot of issues within your body if you're not prepared for it. If you are unaware of how, you know, an imbalance in your body then systemically impacts the rest of your body, you're not going to know how to pre pre 
prepare yourself for a surgery and then also how to prepare yourself after a surgery because it's not like a pill that you take and you're fixed. There's a lot of work that goes into it. So it's really important for you to be mindful of what are the things that they're asking of you and how can you make these changes or meet your needs. Hang on, please. And I'm back. You guys didn't think anything happened, but I had to go answer a door. <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying, you really have to know what you're getting into so that way you can prepare yourself both in the front end and the back end of whatever it is that you, you end up taking what path you go down. Um, but self-advocacy is extremely important because there's going to be a lot of dead ends and there's going to be a lot of people that say you're wrong. There's nothing wrong with you. You're fine. Just relax, <laughs> do some yoga, do some breath work. You're, it's all in your head, right? And those things can be very frustrating to hear. Granted, they're also very great approaches to like literally calm yourself down. But until you have a true answer and a path to take, you can't really calm yourself down because you're constantly in that unknown of what do I do next and where do I go from here? Um, so I, this is just your friendly reminder, advocate like you've never advocated ever for yourself. And just a quick little backstory. Um, I have been, I'm 33. I think I've said that in many videos, but I'm 33 years old. And by the time I was 19, I had to become my mother's medical advocate because she at the time had severe rheumatoid arthritis, which then later um, turned into having cancer. And now she has passed away. It's been about six years. But through that whole process from being uh, 19 to 27, I think it was 27 when she passed, um, that whole time frame, almost 10 years, I went with her to doctor's appointment after doctor's appointment after doctor's appointment and watched doctors belittle her in a way because they weren't speaking to her on her level. They were telling her things, but it was in a very medical collegiate level and she didn't know what they were saying. And when we left, she was really sad and upset and didn't know what to do and wasn't able to follow certain protocols because she thought it might harm her. And I think it's extremely important to stand up for yourself, stand up for the people you're advocating for, but stand up for yourself if it's you in the position. And I know that can be extremely scary because these are the people that are supposed to have the answers. But if something doesn't sit right with you, take action. Don't sit back. Don't just say, okay, okay, yes. And assume it's the only option because most of the time it's not. And again, I can be <laughs> that person in the back of your mind saying, I didn't have surgery. I don't need a surgery and I am healed. And the only minor procedure that I did have was having a tongue tie release underneath of my tongue. And that has created huge systemic relief over anything that I have done in the last several years. Everything I have done is, you know, obviously helped that. But had I just went two years ago and had that surgery of removing a rib and removing neck muscles, I might not be in this position. I might not be able to lift weights. I might not be able to even teach in my classroom as an art teacher because I might not even have the mobility in my arm. And I know these are a lot of ifs, but I'm sure if you've been in this situation and you've been given a specific potential path to take, you've went through the what ifs. What if I can't do this ever again? What if? And don't let those stop you, right? Go with your gut. Do a lot of research. There is so much information out there. You just have to look. You have to be brave enough to ask questions to people that you don't even think you're going to get a response from because most of the time they're going to respond to you. Even if it's like, hey, I'll talk to you, if you, you know, pay an hour of my time, you know, they're still going to give you an answer. And I think that that's important to know is you have so many options. So again, advocate, advocate, advocate you're worth it. Your body is worth it. Your mind is worth it. Your life is worth it. At the end of the day, it comes down to what type of a life do you want to live? And I want you to think about that. So with that, this is where we'll end until our next TOS talks. If you haven't yet, subscribe. So many of you are watching these videos. You clearly enjoy coming back time after time. So just come back every time, right? So subscribe, be a permanent member of the Catching Waves Yoga family. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys very soon. Bye.